In today's class, we will learn quickly the concept of Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law in brief. Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL and Kirchhoff's current law or KCL we apply in an electrical network to simplify that and to find the desired response may be in terms of voltage drop across a passive element or current flowing through a passive element. When we apply KVL in an electrical network, first we identify the meshes or loops in that electrical network and what we refer as mesh or loop that we will learn in this class itself little later. And after identifying the meshes, we assume the mesh currents in each mesh or loop. And when we apply Kirchhoff's current law, we first identify nodes or principal nodes in that electrical network. And after identifying the nodes, we assume node voltage at each node. When we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL, basically we form an equation which has only the voltage values. These voltage values could be the voltage values of the voltage sources or maybe the voltage drop across passive elements. If it is a DC voltage source, then it will have a constant value. And if it is an AC voltage source, then we will take the RMS value. But if it is a voltage drop across a passive element, then as per Ohm's law, we know that the voltage drop will be the current that flows through that passive element multiplied by the resistance or impedance value of that element. So basically resistance or impedance value will be constant only variable will be the current value that flows through that element. So when we apply KVL the equation that we form there the variables will be currents though it is an equation of voltage values. Similarly in case of Kirchhoff's current law or KCL we form an equation of current values. And there the variables are basically the voltage values. This idea will be more clear when we will solve a few examples little later. So stay tuned. Now the question comes that when we will apply mesh analysis and when node analysis. In an electrical network if we see the number of mesh equations in that circuit is less than the number of node equations then we will go for mesh analysis that will take less time and less effort. Similarly, if we see that the number of node equations in the circuit is less than the number of mesh equations, then definitely we will go for node analysis. This is a general concept that we mostly use when we plan to apply KVL or KCL to simplify an electrical network. Now both the laws can be applied for DC as well as AC circuits. Next, we will learn those laws and also simplify electrical networks using those laws. First, we will start with Kirchhoff's voltage law that is KVL. It says that the algebraic sum of all the voltages or voltage drops in any closed path or loop of a network that is traversed in a single direction is zero. This is a simple network where we have a voltage source having suppose value V and we have two resistors having the resistance values R1 and R2. They are connected in series and suppose if the I current flows through that circuit where all these components are connected in series, then how we can apply this Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now suppose if we start traversing from this point, then we will traverse in this direction, in clockwise direction. Since in this circuit we have a single voltage source and we know that the current comes out of that voltage source from the positive terminal. So this will be the current direction in this circuit. Now the polarity of this voltage source as it is mentioned already in the circuit and through R1 and R2 this is the direction of current flow and we know that always the current flows from higher potential to lower potential. So with respect to the direction of current that is flowing this will be at higher potential and this end will be at lower potential for this resistance or resistor. Now similarly this will be at higher potential as per the direction of current that is flowing in this circuit and this will be at lower potential. Now we have to follow a convention for the voltage values as per their polarity. Now when we have started traversing from this point and we are traversing in clockwise direction. So for the voltage source, we are traversing from negative terminal to positive terminal. Now what we should take this voltage value, whether it will be taken as positive or negative, we can assume anything. 
we may take positive or negative both will work and finally we will get the same result but whatever convention we are following for a single voltage value that same convention should be followed throughout the whole circuit now let's think this way that when we are moving from negative terminal to positive terminal basically we are gaining some potential so from negative to positive when we will be moving that we will take as positive voltage that means through this resistors when we are moving from higher potential to lower potential this voltage drops these voltage values will be taken as negative voltage as per the convention that we have assumed now as per this law the algebraic sum of all the voltage values so first we have to see that what are the voltage values so for this voltage source the voltage value is v we are moving from negative to positive terminal as per this convention that will be taken as positive voltage so this is plus v or we can simply write v now when this current is flowing through this resistor the voltage drop will be i multiplied by r1 and since here we are moving from positive to or higher potential to lower potential then this voltage value will be taken as negative similarly for the other resistor so that will be i multiplied by r2 and as per the law this algebraic sum of all these voltage values of voltage drop in an closed path or loop of a network will be zero now here in this equation the unknown variable is i so if we keep i at one side of the equation then it can be written as ir1 plus ir2 and this will be equal to v so we can simply write i will be equal to v divided by r1 plus r2 that's how we apply kvl in an electrical network next we will simplify an electrical network using kvl so this is an electrical network where we can see we have one current source we have two voltage sources and we have three resistors now we can see that we have one complete mesh or loop here where we have one voltage source we have two resistors across which we can easily find or express the voltage drops here we have another mesh or loop where we have one voltage source and we have two resistors now here we have another mesh or loop where we have one resistor that is okay but we have a current source but when we apply kvl the equation that we form that equation is basically of voltage values but here we have one current source so what we can do is we can convert or transform this current source into an equivalent voltage source the concept of this transformation has already been explained in another class the link is given in the description box now here since we want to apply kvl exclusively to learn that concept so here we are not identifying whether the number of messages are less or number of nodes are less and which one will be suitable for this circuit straightforward we will be applying kvl only but before that we will be transforming this current source now we know when we will transform the current source into an equivalent voltage source the value of that voltage source will follow the ohms law so the value of that voltage source will be current value which is 2 and the resistance value which is 10 so it will be 20 volt and the same resistance will be connected with the voltage source but this time it will be in series instead of parallel which is actually connected with the current source in the actual diagram so after transformation the circuit will like this where we will have a voltage source having value 20 volt that we have already found then this 10 ohm resistance or resistors will be connected in series with that voltage source and then with that we already have a 10 volt voltage source here and then the rest of the part of the circuit remains same now what we will do here what we can see here is we have two separate meshes or loops where we will apply mesh analysis so before that we have to assume some mesh or loop current say for the first loop this is our loop current and this is the direction of that current say this is i1 and for the second loop this is also flowing in the same direction the current value is i2 so for the first loop suppose if we start traversing from this point then first we have the voltage source having value 20 volt and this time we are traversing from negative to positive terminal so it will be taken as positive voltage then we have this 10 ohm resistance and this i1 current will be flowing from higher potential to lower potential so the voltage drop will be 10 multiplied by i1 and then we have this voltage source where we are moving from positive to negative terminal so it will be minus 10 volt then we have this resistor 
where with respect to this current value this will be at higher potential and this will be at lower potential so we can write this way that the voltage drop will be one is the resistance value and then we have this current value i1 and with respect to that the polarity will be negative but through this resistor actually both the currents are flowing so when we are analyzing the first loop the net current will be this current minus this current which is the current in the second loop so instead of i1 we will be writing i1 minus i and that will be equal to zero as per the law now if we simplify further then it will be so this will be our first equation now if we analyze the second loop and suppose if we start from this point from any point we can start so suppose if we start from this point and along the direction of the current if we move or if we traverse then it will be for this voltage source we are traversing from higher potential to lower potential so this time it will be we are losing some potential so it will be minus 5 the value will be negative then we are moving as per this direction of current we are moving from higher potential to lower potential the voltage drop value will be 5 multiplied by the current value i2 through this 1 ohm resistor is flowing upward and as per the direction of that current this will be at higher potential this will be at lower potential so here the voltage drop value will be 1 multiplied by i2 but again since through this 1 ohm resistor both the currents are flowing so when now this time we are in the second loop and with respect to that we are analyzing so the net current will be i2 minus i1 so instead of i2 we will be writing i2 minus i1 and that equation the algebraic sum of all these voltage values will be zero as per the kvl now if we simplify further then it will be so this is our second equation and now if we simplify both the equations we can easily find the values of i1 and i2 but as per the problem statement we wanted to find the current value flowing through 5 ohm resistor so i2 if we find then that much will be sufficient for us so here we have multiplied the second equation by minus 11 and after simplification we are getting the value of i2 as minus 9 by 13 ampere and since the current value that we are obtaining here is negative that means actually the current is flowing through this 5 ohm resistor opposite to our assumption as per our assumption the current through 5 ohm resistor is flowing downwards that means actually through 5 ohm resistor the current is flowing in upward direction so if we take the current which is flowing in downward direction then the current value will be negative but when we will say that the current is actually flowing in upward direction means in anti-clockwise direction then the current value will be positive so this is how we apply kvl to simplify an electrical network next we will learn the concept of kcl and we will try to apply in electrical network to simplify that as per KCL, it says that the algebraic sum of currents at any node of a circuit at every instant of time is zero. So this time when we are talking about KCL, we are doing so with respect to node. Now we have to learn what is a node. A node is a junction of two or more branches of an electrical network. This is an example of a simple network where we have one current source and three resistors let's assume that the current value of this current source is i and this current is getting divided into three parts and each part is flowing through each resistor let's assume that the current values through all these resistors are i1 i2 and i3 respectively now all these three currents are getting added at this point so here at this branch the current value will be again i now in an electrical network we have the concept of three types of nodes first one is simple node a simple node is a node where two only two branches of that network are connected so here as we can see two resistors suppose of a network they are connected in series and this node will be referred as the simple node where these two components or resistors are connected and since they are connected in series so if the current which is flowing through this the first resistor if it is i then the current value through the second resistor will be also i that's why in case of simple node through those two components or branches the current value remains same now the second concept is principal node principal node in an electrical network is that node where more than two branches of that network are connected and here the current gets divided 
so if we talk about or look into this node here we can see that this main current i is getting divided into three parts and at, with respect to this node we have four branches so this will be referred or called as a principal node again if we look at this node here also we have four branches and these three currents are getting added and forming this current i again so this will be again referred as a principal node among all the principal nodes that we have in an electrical network the node which is which will be connected to the ground that particular node will be referred as a reference node now as per kcl we will see that what equation we can form here with respect to this node with respect to this node say a the main current i is an incoming current and all these three currents i1 i2 i3 are outgoing current so if we take the incoming current as a positive current then it will be written as i and all these outgoing currents with respect to that convention will be negative current so it can be or they will be written as i minus i1 then minus i2 and then minus i3 and then that equation will be equal to zero so finally we can write i will be equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 so can't we say that the algebraic sum of all the incoming currents in with respect to a particular node or entering that node will be equal to the algebraic sum of all the outgoing currents here though with respect to this node we have only incoming current but suppose if we had more than one incoming current then on the left side of this equation we would have had algebraic sum of all those incoming currents and on the right side of this equation we already have the algebraic sum of all these outgoing currents and that's what it is written in the second line that the algebraic sum of currents entering our node is equal to the algebraic sum of the currents leaving our node so entering our node means this will be referred as incoming current and leaving our node means all those currents will be referred as outgoing currents next we will simplify an electrical network using kcl so this is our electrical network where we have three registers and two current sources since this time we want to learn the concept of kcl and its application so without analyzing the fact where the number of meshes will be less or number of nodes will be less in this circuit we will go for kcl only now for if we want to apply kcl first thing we have to identify is how many principal nodes are there in this circuit so as we can see here that we have at with respect to this node we have three branches so this will be referred as our principal node which we mark as a and here also at this node three branches are connected so this will be again referred as a principal node now if we come at the bottom of this circuit we can see here at this node also we have one branch two branch and here we have three branches and with respect to this node also we have one branch two branch and we have this branch as well but it, between these two nodes we don't have any active or passive element so basically these two nodes will be taken as a single node and with respect to that node we have four branches so this will be referred as a principal node so if we mark this as c that means this node will be also a c node now there is another concept that when we apply kcl one of the principal nodes is connected with the ground so here the c node if we connect with the ground then the potential of this node will be zero volt let's assume that the potential of node a is va and of node b is vv with respect to this node we can see here that the direction of this current is incoming current but for other two branches we don't know the current direction we will assume that through other branches the currents are leaving so they are outgoing currents that means the potential of this node a which we have assumed as va is at higher potential with respect to zero volt and potential of va is more than vv and if our assumption is incorrect then we will get negative result the way we have seen in case of kvl now if we apply kcl at node a then as per that law what we know is summation of or algebraic sum of all the incoming currents is equal to algebraic sum of all the outgoing currents now here we have only one incoming current with respect to node a so 10 we will be writing at one side of that equation and then algebraic sum of these two current values which are outgoing currents 
Now if we want to know the current value through this resistance then it will be we know as per Ohm's law V is equal to I multiplied by R. That means I will be equal to V divided by R. V is the potential difference between two ends or two points. So here between these two ends the potential difference will be will be VA which we have assumed is at higher potential then the potential of this node which we have assumed as at zero potential so VA minus zero divided by the resistance value which is 0 0.25 so it is 1 by 4 plus this current value where the potential difference of these two points will be VA minus VB divided by the resistance value which is 0 0.2 that means 1 by 5 now if we simplify further then it will be this is our first equation now if we apply kcl at node b then we can see here that at node b we have these three branches this is our incoming current so on the left side of that equation we can write 5 this is only incoming currents and as per this node we don't know what are the direction of the currents which are flowing through these two components for this resistance we will assume that the current is an outgoing current and through this resistance also we will assume that the current is outgoing current and if it is an outgoing current then the current value will be this will be at higher potential and this is already at zero potential so it will be vb minus zero the way we have written for the first equation divided by the resistance value which is 0 0.5 that means half then plus this is also outgoing current so it will be algebraic sum of both the currents so here vb now this time will be at higher potential with respect to va so the potential difference will be VB minus VA then divided by the resistance value which is same that is 0 0.2 that means it will be 1 by 5. Now if we simplify further then we will have so this is our second equation. Now we will simplify these two equations and we will find the values of VA and VB. So we will multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by 9. So B1 will be 95 divided by 38 that will come as 2.5 volt. Now if we put the value of VB as 2.5 volt in any of these equation finally we will get the value of VA as 2.5 volt also. So this is how we apply the concept of KCL to simplify an electrical network. Now if we want to learn more about KVL and KCL and if you want to solve a little more complex exercises then I have already taken separate class for KVL and KCL the links are given in the description box you can always refer those classes and you can learn more about KVL and KCL with this I end today's class see you in the next class thank you